this to its fine art print. All right, let's get this started. Hi everybody, welcome back to my studio. Stella here. As you may have noticed, today's setup is a little bit different because today's video is requested by one of my art lovers, Christine. Christine, this one's for you. Thank you so much for leaving me a message on Instagram. I am actually going to teach you guys how to create fine art prints out of your original paintings. All right, let's get it started. This is the beginner's guide to how to create your own fine art prints from your own studio without having to work with a third party printer. So I'm going to break down all the steps, all the tools, and also the technical skills you need to learn to be able to do this all by yourself. Basically a one person show, that's what I'm talking about. So in other words, how do we go from an original painting such as this one? This is called the Urban Soulster. It is painted, it's a canvas board painted with watercolor acrylic and alcohol ink with marker written on the actual frame and glass so how do we go from this to its fine art print step one get your painting finished you know what if you don't even finish your painting there's nothing we can work with so get it finished in my case I just finished this about three days ago. It's fully dry now. It's also UV treated. This is actually acrylic on canvas board. So there's that. Now, step two, how are you going to turn this into a digital asset? What machines, camera or scanner are you going to use? Well, in my case, I am using, and my preferred weapon of choice is actually Epson. Perfection V600 Photo Scanner. And I promise you, I am not sponsored by them. However, if you are interested, after hearing my reasons why, the uh, purchasing link is down in the description below. So Epson V600 Photo Scanner was actually introduced to me by my licensing agent of the time, about four or five years ago now, almost. It hasn't broken down yet, knock on wood, and it's working like a workhorse. Like it can practically scan anything under the sun. But the second most important thing is that their scanning technology is actually patented. They won a war for their patented scanning technology. The detail that scan can pick up is tremendous. You see those like woven canvas texture? That scanner can pick all of the little textures the lint, even cat fur, I got three cats, you know, off of my painting. So it is absolutely incredible. And also Epson has really, really good customer service. And this particular model and size is actually very affordable. So if you're interested, purchase link is down below in the description. All right, just to show you guys really quickly, I'm going to take a, another scan of this. Just go to preview and it's scanning in process. Yeah, it does make some noise, but it's not too bad. There we go. Look at how nice, how like the clarity and the detail is incredible. But anyways, so actually, if you guys are interested for me to make another video about how to actually adjust all these settings, let me know and how to do post editing in Photoshop. Just leave your comments down below. I think that's actually very, very important because there's no way you can just sell the scan as is. You definitely have to clean it out and make sure you crop it to size or the size that you want. And then also do color correction and all that based on the type of paper that you'll be using. All right, let me know. Now let's talk about paper. So for my basic art prints, I use the Epson Ultra Premier Presentation Paper in matte. I find this paper to be very sturdy, very high quality. Um, it's white, but it's not so pure white where you actually hurt your eyes. And because it's matte, it doesn't glare. So all my basic prints, I use this. It comes in all sorts of different colors, but personally, I work with 17 by 22 size because my machine can actually, the widest part is 17 inches. And what I found is that with this one single piece of paper, I can cut it in four, one, two, and then down below three, four, and each one is eight and a half by 11. So it works perfect for me. 
but if you're looking for something more unique, more artisanal, I highly recommend the Red River Paper. This, this company is highly recommended by so many other artists as well. Oh, by the way, as you can see, I'm not even trying to clean my desk at this point. I'm literally in between two projects and trying to shoot this video, so my apologies for the messiness. Okay, coming back to the Red River Paper, um, they're really awesome. This is actually a sample kit I purchased, and I can't remember how much it is, but if you guys are interested, both papers and all the other tools and supplies I've listed so far, all their purchasing links are listed down below in the description box. So, okay, coming back to River Paper, you can see that they produce so many different types of paper. I don't even think I bought all of the sample ones yet, but what's really awesome is that they also come with instruction sheet. Depending on what type of paper you bought from them, you need to calibrate your printer to fit that particular paper, and then it tells you what settings you should calibrate out. Fantastic, absolutely love it. So I forgot which one, I think this might be a polar gloss metallic paper I uh, bought from them and test printed. It looks really, really cool. But the coolest one, at least in my opinion, is this one. I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is actually canvas paper, all woven. I absolutely adored it and I test printed this tiny little swatch. Unfortunately, about a couple months ago, or no, actually six months ago, they discontinued this one so I was heartbroken, so there's that. <laughs> yeah, but see, these are all the little test prints I did it. So if you're interested, buy the sample kit, test print, and figure out which paper works for you, and then based on the price of individual paper, you'll figure out what your retail price is. Speaking of that, if you guys are interested to learn how to uh, establish pricing tier for your fine art print business, please leave a comment below and I will create that video. I actually teach a lot of young artists, well not young, emerging artists of how to do that. Finally, we're at step four, which is get yourself a printer. But what printer should you get? If you are thinking about getting a professional level printer that can print really high quality, amazing colors and textures, all sorts of different papers and it can go as large as 17 by 22, I highly recommend the Canon ProGraph 1000 printer. You can actually buy this for just about $1,000, not including tax, on Amazon. Um, I have the product linked down below in the description box. One of my favorite things about the Pro 1000, what I see on my computer screen is exactly what comes out on the print. That photographic moment is something that will trigger emotions and move people like music does. So there are a couple of reasons why I love this printer. Uh, first of all, I've had this one for also almost five years. It actually broke down somewhere by year three, and it turns out to be a defect from the factory. It will actually show you little notifications saying that error, error. Now here's the thing, they have one of the best customer service, but you have to buy Canon's warranty. And I believe it's like within three years, you can have your machine fixed, replaced at zero cost. So please do that. That's actually one of the major reasons why I decided to buy the Canon machine because of their customer service. And number two, not a lot of professional level printer is just under $3,000 and can give you this size of print, 17 by 22. And if you go to, you can change, sorry, I can't see what I'm doing. See all these different sizes you can try out? Okay, so if you don't want to try out, that's okay. We'll go back. The different types. Matte, Pro Crystal Gray, Live Photo, Heavy Art, Canvas. Yes, they actually have a canvas Japanese paper. Hagaki, I've never tried that before, so maybe in the future I will. But remember the Red River paper we would, I was just showing you guys? So the Red River Paper Company actually tells you for their type of papers, which setting you should actually select. So it was extremely helpful. The only drawback, the ink is not cheap at all. Uh, it can cost you $799 if you buy everything at once. But here's a big but. When you buy the machine first, it comes with the ink. The metric for measuring how much ink you have left is actually pretty inaccurate and <laughs> relative. Um, I actually called the customer service so many times and even they can figure out how their machine actually measures how much is left. 
So I did the dumbest thing ever. I basically measure it according to my own printing needs and the time. And let me tell you, I do a lot of very colorful prints that use more than seven colors each time. And even when this little notification sign shows up, usually the ink will still last for another four to five months. So that's pretty much how I measure it. So honestly, I got another probably six months to go, four to uh, five to six months to go. So yeah, so even though it's, it's uh, the ink cartridges are very expensive, but if you buy individual, it's not going to kill you. And even when your monitor tells you it's low in ink, most likely you can go another four to five months you know, before the machine really starts to shut down. I totally forgot to mention why I only work with high-res camera when I have a very large painting that cannot be scanned on a tiny little scanner. Um, in order to do that, you actually need to know how to set up your lighting equipment so that the light is even now and you don't have to do a lot of post-editing to clear the shadows or the unnatural glare. Or you can also work with professional right, photo editor so and cameraman, but the problem today. with that is I you have to pay a helpful. lot of money to make that happen. Huh. I just realized I didn't even have a chance to talk about packaging yet. You know what, let's do it this way. Leave a comments below if you want to learn about packaging, what type of material to purchase, or how to do post editing in Photoshop after you scan your painting in, or even how to establish pricing for your artwork, uh, fine art prints, unless you guys want to learn original paintings. Whatever it is, leave a comments below and I will get to them one by one. Hmm, maybe this will become a multi-part video series, right? <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you at my next video. Ciao!